not the entire topic, just the, the initial introductory part of it. Specific learning outcomes. By the end of this presentation, the audience will be able to define terms related to strabismus, know the anatomy of extraocular muscles and their movements, know about sensory and motor adaptations to strabismus, define amblyopia, describe the types of amblyopia, know the treatment of amblyopia. First, we're going to revise some terms uh, that we will need uh, to understand uh, the anatomy of the eye for uh, strabismus. General shape and uh, general shape. Segments of the eyeball is, uh, is segments of two spares of different sizes. Anterior smaller segment is transparent and forms one sixth of the eyeball. Posterior larger segment is opaque and forms five sixths of the eyeball. The anterior pole. Anterior pole is the center of curvature of transparent segment uh, or cornea. Posterior pole is the center of posterior curvature of the eyeball and is located slightly temporal to the optic nerve. Anatomical axis, geometric axis, optic axis, these are the same names for the same, uh, different names for the uh, same axis. It is a line that is connecting the two poles of the eyeball. Next uh, is equator. The equator lies midway between the two poles. Uh, visual axis. Uh, first we did uh, anatomical axis and now we are doing uh, visual axis. Visual axis passes from the fovea through the nodal point of the eye to the point of fixation. In normal binocular single vision, the visual axis of the two eyes intersect at the point of fixation. The images, combined by images are combined by binocular responsive cells in the visual cortex. And the kappa. The visual and anatomical axes of the eye do not correspond to each other. The angle between the two axes is called angle kappa and it is usually about 5 degrees. We see the picture showing the visual and the optic axis and uh, that one is showing the angle kappa between the two axes. Orbit. The orbit forms uh, a pyramid. Lateral and medial walls are at 45 degrees to each other. The orbital axis, central axis is at 22.5 degrees. Approximately we take it to 23 degrees. This is a picture showing the lateral and medial walls of the orbit which are at 45 degrees to each other. And the central axis is, uh, 20, is at 23 degrees. Then we have some terms related to strabismus. Orthophoria. Orthophoria is perfect ocular alignment in the absence of any stimulus for fusion. Heterophoria, which is latent squint, implies a tendency to deviate when fusion is blocked. Heterophoria is manifest squint, implies a manifest deviation in which the visual axes do not intersect at the point of deviation. Then we have anatomy of the extraocular muscles. Uh, uh, the, these are the six uh, extraocular muscles. Lateral rectus, medial rectus, superior rectus, inferior rectus, superior oblique and inferior oblique. The extraocular muscles, uh, the three principles that we have to see. The action of the extraocular muscles depend on the position of the globe at the time of muscle contraction. Primary position of gaze, when the eye is looking straight ahead at a fixed point on the horizon with the head erect, the visual axis forms an angle of 23 degrees with the orbital axis and this is the primary position of gaze. Then we have primary action, effect of a muscle when the eye is in the primary position. Subsidiary actions are additional effects of the extraocular muscles which depends on the position of the eye. Listing, listing plane, it is an imaginary coronal plane passing through the center of rotation of the globe. This is the listing plane, it's uh, in the coronal plane. Then we have axis of fit. The globe rotates left and right on the vertical z axis. The globe rotates up and down on the horizontal x axis, and torsional movements occur on the y axis. Intorsion occurs when the superior limbus rotates nasally and extorsion occurs when the superior limbus rotates temporarily. In this uh, diagram, uh, the, the axes of kicks, uh, kick are also shown, X, Y and Z. Now we have the anatomy of the muscles, the lateral rectus. It originates at the annulus of sin and is inserted 6.9 millimeters behind the temporal limbus. 
sole action is adduction in primary position. The medial rectus, medial rectus originates at the annulus of brain, inserts 5.5 mm behind the nasal rectus. Sole action is adduction in primary position. Superior rectus muscle originates from upper part of the annulus of brain, inserts 7.7 mm behind the limbus. The primary action is elevation when the globe is abducted to 23 degrees. Secondary action is adduction and intorsion when the globe is adducted 67 degrees. This is a diagram showing the uh, action of uh, superior rectus muscle. At 23 degrees, it acts as an elevator and uh, when it is when the globe is rotated 67 degrees it acts to intort the eye then we have inferior rectus muscle originates from lower part of the annulus of brain inserts 6.5 millimeter behind the limbus the primary action of inferior rectus muscle is depression depression and uh, it occurs when the globe is uh, abducted to, uh, at 23 degrees secondary action is adduction and extorsion when the globe is adducted, uh, 67 degrees. Then next we have uh, oblique muscles. Uh, the oblique muscles are inserted behind the equator and they form an angle of 51 degrees with the visual axis. Superior oblique. Uh, superior oblique originates from the body of sphenoid bone, superior medial to the optic foramen, passes forward through the trochlea at the angle between superior and mid medial walls, reflected backwards and laterally to insert in the posterior upper temporal quadrant of the globe. The primary action of superior oblique is intorsion and secondary action is depression uh, and abduction. When the globe is adducted 51 degrees, the visual axis coincides with the line of pull of the muscle. In this position, it can act as a depressor. This is the best position of the globe for testing the action of superior oblique muscle. This is the, the action of superior oblique muscle. It acts as an untorter in uh, primary position and uh, uh, when it is adducted, it acts as a depressor. Then next we have inferior oblique originates from the floor of the orbit behind the orbital rim lateral to the lacrimal sac, passes backward and laterally, inserts in the posterior lower temporal quadrant of the globe close to the macula. Inferior oblique primary action is extorsion and secondary action is elevation and abduction. When the globe is adducted 51 degrees, it acts as an elevator. When the globe is abducted 59 degrees, the main action is extorsion. Uh, this is the uh, dimensions of the uh, uh, extraocular muscles. Most of the reptile muscles uh, length is around 40 millimeters. Only superior rectus is 41 millimeters. Superior oblique is 32 millimeters in length and inferior oblique is 34 millimeters. Tendon length is 3.6 uh, for uh, medial rectus, 8.4 for lateral rectus, 5.4 for superior rectus. 5 mm for inferior rectus and uh, from 10 mm free tro trochlea is uh, superior oblique and the tendon length of the inferior oblique is minimal. And uh, for the insertion we this diagram, uh, uh, the insertion of the reptile muscles uh, uh, is at, uh, uh, is like medial rectus se leke jab hum superior rectus ki taraf aate hain to wo insertions jo hai wo chote si badhti hai it is basically the distance from the limbus is called spiral of the locks we kehte hain isko is tarah yaad kar sakte hain m i l l s mid medial inferior lateral or superior 5.5 mm 6.5 6.9 and 7.7 mm from the limbus इसकी हमारे पास सर्जिकल सिग्निफिकेंस भी होती है व्हेन यू आर व्हेन वी आर डूइंग स्क्वेंस सर्जरीज। नेक्स्ट वी हैव ऑक्यूलर मूवमेंट्स। ऑक्यूलर मूवमेंट डक्शंस हैं, वर्जन्स हैं और वर्जेंसेस। इन डक्शंस वी हैव मोनो ऑक्यूलर मूवमेंट्स अराउंड द एक्सिस ऑफ़ पे। एडडक्शन, एडडक्शन, एलिवेशन Versions are binocular, simultaneous, conjugate in the same direction movements. These include dextroversion, levoversion, dextroelevation, dextrodepression, levoelevation, levodepression, levocycloversion, and dextrocycloversion. 
and third is vergences which are by by binocular simultaneous distribute in opposite direction movements convergence and divergence then we have uh, position of gaze we have uh, six cardinal positions of gaze which is dextro dextroversion levoversion dextro elevation dextro depression levo elevation and levo depression and uh, there are uh, nine diagnostic positions of gaze which include the six cardinal positions primary position of gaze elevation and depression this is a diagram showing the primary position of gaze in the center and uh, on the side we have the cardinal positions and all of these combined uh, will are the diagnostic positions of gaze sensory adaptations to strabismus the ocular sensory system has the ability to adopt for normal states confusion and dyslexia by two mechanisms suppression and abnormal retinal correspondence suppression involves active inhibition by the visual cortex of the image of one eye when both eyes are open Stimuli for suppression include diplopia, confusion, and blurred image from one eye. Abnormal anomalous retinal correspondence, a condition in which non-corresponding retinal elements acquire a common subjective visual direction. For example, fovea of the fixating eye is paired with the non-foveal element of the deviated eye. Binocular response, uh, binocular responses in ARC are never as good as in normal bifoveal binocular signal. seen in small angle ectotropia microtropia then we have motor adaptations to strabismus it involves a compensatory head posture it eliminates diplopia and helps to centralize binocular visual field the patient will turn the head into the direction of field of action of the weak muscle that the head will turn where the eye cannot uh, there are three uh, um, uh, three head postures face turn head lift head tilt and chin elevation or depression face turn face turn is usually adopted to control a horizontal deviation for example if the left lateral rectus is paralyzed diplopia will occur in left case so the face will the patient will turn face to the left it deviates the eye to the right away from the field of action of the weak muscle and the head tilt head tilt is adopted to compensate for torsional diplopia for example in right superior oblique uh, weakness the head is tilted to the left chin elevation chin elevation is used to compensate for weakness of an elevator or depressor now next uh, we are going to discuss amblyopia amblyopia is unilateral or bilateral in best corrected visual acuity caused by form uh, by, by caused by form vision deprivation or abnormal binocular interaction for which there is no identifiable pathology of the eye or visual pathology or visual pathway and myopia is actually a diagnosis of exclusion about which the patient is presenting with the unilateral or bilateral decrease in vision so you need to have to rule out all the diseases and the full be disease then you have to go and myopia label it classification of amblyopia strabismic hai and isometropic hai stimulus deprivation hai mediodromal hai or bilateral amyotropic amblyopia first we have strabismic amblyopia um, when the eye is deviated to koi ek jo deviated eye hai uski vision jo hai brain jo hai usko suppress kar deta hai jiski wajah se we have strabismic amblyopia it results in abnormal binocular interaction in strabismic continued monoocular suppression due to deviation then next we have anisometropic amblyopia it's caused by difference in refractive error between the eyes may result from a difference of as little as one diopter the more blurred image receives a blurred image resulting in amblyopia may coexist with strabismic amblyopia similar deprivation results from vision deprivation typically caused by opacities in the media for example cataracts doses that covers the pupil then we have bilateral amyotropic it results from high symmetrical refractive error usually hypermetropia meridional amblyopia is uh, resulting from image blur in one meridian by uncorrected astigmatism it can be unilateral or bilateral Uh, in the absence of an organic lesion a difference in best corrected visual acuity of two snellen lines or more is indicative of amblyopia 
Visual acuity in Ibriopia is usually better when reading single letters than letters in row. Treatment, the sensitive periods during which the acuity of an amblyopic eye can be improved is 7 to 8 years in strabismic amblyopia. And uh, uh, I will discuss the treatment further in, uh, in other slides. The treatment include occlusion and panelization. Occlusion may be prescribed the patient glasses and then we ask them to patch or cover the, uh, the, good, uh, the good eye so that the patient uses the, uh, the amblyopic eye. And in panelization, we prescribe patients atropine drops, uh, especially when the patient is non-compliant, we give them atropine drops to put in the good eye so that they pay, the patient can use the amblyopic eye. Occlusion is uh, more effective than panelization and uh, occlusion is a very issue compliance. If you are compliant, you will have to give them atropine drops advice. And amblyopia uh, treatment studies by PEDIC, Pediatric Eye Disease Investigator, which is a collaborative network dedicated to facilitating multi center clinical research in strabismus, amblyopia, and other eye disorders that affect children. The network, which was formed in 1997, is funded by National Eye Institute. These studies provide support for treatment and management of amblyopia that is safe and effective for patients. Um, I was reading this uh, from, I, uh, I sourced uh, about this research from Google, so I'm not really sure that this data will be true or not, but I just added it. Just take your word. There were many websites, there were many different websites, especially in modern amblyopia, that there were 612 or 624 or 636. There were 624 or 636. Uh, first, we have mild amblyopia. Mild amblyopia is visual acuity in the amblyopic eye of 6 9 or better. Modern amblyopia is visual acuity in the amblyopic eye of 6 12 to 6 24 or 6 36. Severe amblyopia is visual acuity in the amblyopic eye of 6 60 to 6 120. Role of glasses in the treatment of amblyopia. The first line of treatment is prescribing a spectacle prescription. Uh, for this, uh, the, uh, the ATS uh, study's objective was to evaluate the effectiveness of refractive correction alone for the treatment of untreated and isometropic amblyopia in children aged 3 to 7 years old. This was their fifth uh, research. The result shows that uh, amblyopia improved with optical correction by equal to uh, or greater than 2 lines in 77% and resolved in 27%. Improvement took up to 30 weeks for stabilization criteria to be met. So the conclusion was that, uh, that opti optimal spectacles can lead to improvements in vision in children with anisometropic amblyopia. Then there was another uh, research a study in which they compared patching with only spectacle wear. Uh, two hours of daily patching combined with one hour of concurrent uh, near visual activities versus control group of spectacle wear alone for the treatment of moderate to severe amblyopia in children 3 to 7 years old. The result shows that improvement in visual acuity of the amblyopic eye from baseline to 5 weeks average, 1.1 lines in the patching group and 0.5 lines in the spectacles alone. So this concluded that patching was better as compared to spectacle wear alone. Then we have, uh, there is another study in which they compared patching with atropine. Uh, the uh, objective was to compare patching in atropine as treatments for moderate amblyopia in 3 to 7 years old. Results showed visual acuity uh, increased, the six, uh, visual acuity was greater than 6 by 9 or more, improved by more than 3 lines in 79% in patching and 74% in atropine group. So the conclusion was patching is equal to atropine treatment but in moderate amblyopia only. Then uh, recommendations for treatment based on amblyopia severity and patient age. Hours of patching recommended for children aged 3 to 7. Moderate amblyopia patched 2 hours a day. A similar in efficacy to patching 6 hours a day. Severe amblyopia patched 6 hours a day. Similar in efficacy to full time patching. Uh, this is the research uh, or studies. We have to compare kiya tha, 2 hours ko or 6 hours. Ko. So it proved that both of the efficacy of 6 hours per day or 2 hours per day is similar. So for moderate amblyopia, they decided that patch 2 
हम पैचिंग फॉर टू आवर्स इन द डे इन अ देन वी हैव सीवियर एंथ्रोपिया उसमें दे कंपेयर्ड 6 आवर्स इन द डे टू फुल डे फुल टाइम पैचिंग उसके भी सिमिलर इफेक्ट्स आए थे सो दे डिसाइडेड दैट पैचिंग फॉर 6 आवर्स इन द डे इन अ देन वी हैव डोजिंग ऑफ एट्रोपिन रिकमेंडेड फॉर चिल्ड्रन एज 3 टू 12 इयर्स एट्रोपिन इज ओनली इफेक्टिव व्हेन द एब्लायोपिया इज मॉडरेट यानी कि 6 24 या 6 36 तक रीजन होगी अगर then uh, and if, or and they did another study in which they compared weekend atropine to daily atropine uski bhi efficacy similar thi so uh, final recommendation was the weekend atropine for moderate and myopia in ages of 3 to 12 years additional findings when the visual activity in the myopia eye stopped improving with 2 hours of patching increase the hours of patching to 6 hours for children age 3 to 7 years For children aged seven to two years, prescribing patching can improve visual acuity even if myopia has has previously has been previously treated. For older children ages thirteen to seventeen, prescribing patching can improve visual acuity when myopia has not been previously treated. Performing near activities does not improve visual acuity when treating myopia with patching. There is a risk of recurrence of myopia after stopping treatment with patching or atropine when patching is not tapered for six from six or more hours. Thus, patients should be tapered for two hours more with two hours before stopping treatment. The sources uh, of my presentation were uh, Kansky's uh, uh, ophthalmology, Smell's clinical anatomy, and from Google I found about the ADS study. This was just uh, beginning of uh, study discussion, uh, but in the beginning we also add uh, different terms uh, like four year, two year. Maybe uh, do you have a plan for next lecture or we can do now? So the second next lecture will be for the study of four year and two year. Monocular or alternating. 
So if one eye is always squinting, this is monocular deviation. If both eyes turn by turn deviate, this is alternating. Then uh, you see you have to uh, gather all these definitions and uh, prefixes and suffixes. See what is uh, how do you write isophoria, isotropia, and intermittent isotropia? Uh, and if you add a symbol like this, what does this mean? Isophoria for near fixation, right? And if you add T with it, then it is called isotropia. So this is manifest deviation. And if this deviation is present for some time only, this is called intermittent isotropia. Right? So for divergent squint, we write exo. So X is exophoria. X T is divergent square is exotropia and intermittent exotropia is right similarly we have for hyperphoria H for hypertropia we have HD so if there is right hypertropia right R H T 15 degree means that the right eye is deviated upwards. If the eye is deviated downwards, then this is called hypotropia. This is hypophoria, and if we write at O T, this is hypotropia. Then there is These are the common terminologies which we use, we have to write what, how much is the deviation, which eye is deviating and inferior oblique over action. This is when the eye is adducted and goes up. So this is called, also called over elevation in a deduction over elevation O E A over elevation in a deduction. Similarly, there may be spirit of the over activity. In fear of the over action, spirit of the over action. Then this entity superior of the under action, inferior of the under action. So these are the different terminologies. So uh, another uh, classification is dissociated vertical deviation and this is dissociated horizontal deviation. And it can be dissociated torsional deviation also. So in torsion is also known as in cyclotorsion, and X torsion is also known as X cyclotorsion. So, is one group, and if the deviation appears after six months of life, this is called acquired. Congenital and infantile are loved in one group. So if the deviation occurs at birth or within six months of life, this is infantile. Then another way of uh, uh, sort of classifying is we check the squint for near and far. So let's say if 
the convergence point is more for here, this may be a high ACA ratio. Convergent. Convergent. Yeah, good. So if uh, an XT is more for far, so this is divergence excess exotope. Then another way of classifying the squint can be uh, with glasses or without glasses. We always check for that. If the refraction, if the refraction improves the squint or the squint is present with uh, refraction of So these are the different ways how we classify the squint.